So it's day two now of the Manning Conference. This is what I'm wearing for my second day. I had to run around a whole lot last night trying to chase down all the candidates. And as you'll see in my other video, I did not find one of them, but I think I have a solution. So I am heading over this morning. It's early in the morning. We have a networking breakfast first, and then we have opening remarks. And today is all booths set up by different nonprofits and charities that work in the right of center policy world and charitable world. We don't have a booth for the Canadian Constitution Foundation this year, but tons of my friends from other organizations like uh, C2C Magazine, like Canadian Taxpayers Federation, like True North, like the News Forum, who are it's a media organization, a television network that I actually have a television program with called Canadian Justice. So we're going to head to all of those booths. We're going to watch some of the speakers. I'm really excited. They're fascinating panels today from everything to education, to climate change, to the future of work in Canada. And I just can't wait to see what everyone has to say and to visit with all of some old friends. So we've, I've just arrived my first day of the full Canada Strong and Free conference, and the first person I ran into is Preston Manning, who started the entire organization that originated this conference and started this networking conference. Um, I had a quick story I wanted to tell you, Preston, which is when I was a, an intern on Parliament Hill in 2006, one of the things we were supposed to do was write a essay about who our political hero was, uh -huh. and I wrote it about you. So I wanted to ask you, um, what is the purpose of the networking conference, and what is your favorite thing about it? Well, part, part of it is recognizing that the conservative movement tends to be in silos, uh, you know, partly because of the independence and entrepreneurialness of conservatives, uh, the think tanks are kind of in their world, the advocacy groups in there, the political people in theirs. And the main purpose of this conference I is, as the name suggests, networking, that conservatives would be stronger politically and intellectually and human resource-wise if we networked more. And this is to facilitate that kind of network. So, And what's your favorite part of coming? Well, just uh, meeting and seeing people that you normally wouldn't meet and see unless you made a special effort, and particularly after the, uh, the two years of the COVID restrictions where these types of meetings were just not possible to actually see people getting together again. <laughs> so that's my favorite thing. It's, I, it's one of my favorite events of the year. So thanks so much for starting it and it's for being such an inspiration to right of center Canadians. Okay, well, thank you very much. Um, I'm really excited to be in this new role and be able to build on the foundation laid by Troy, laid by Preston. I think we're going to have a really great journey in front of us and the energy I feel in the conservative movement right now is fantastic. So I'm here now with the new president of the Canada Strong and Free Foundation, uh, Jamil Javani. And I wanted to ask you, what are you most excited about with your new role? And what do you want to achieve with the Canada Strong and Free Network? Well, I'm really excited about uh, making next year's conference hopefully equally or more awesome than this year's conference has been. My biggest goal here is to recognize that we cannot rely on the traditional institutions to pass on the wisdom and insights of the conservative movement, the public schools, the universities, mainstream media. We've got to do that ourselves. And I think that's what the Canada Strong and Free Network is about, is connecting people of different generations so that we can support one another and rally around our shared values. So I just finished watching your panel presentation on regulating big tech. So I loved your presentation. <laughs> um, but I want to ask, other than your own, what has been your favorite panel here so far? 
I think the most interesting thing has been uh, hearing the conversations about the oil and gas industry. Michael Binion moderated a, a conference. He's from the Modern Miracle Network. And I think it's been a really good opportunity to see that finding some sort of resolution on how we develop oil and gas is also about national unity. And I think seeing those two conversations as one and the same is really important. Well, thanks so much, Jamil. I'm looking forward to coming next year when I'm sure it's going to be even bigger and better. Hard to top this year, but I believe that you can do it. <laughs> awesome. I'm, I look forward to it. We have to simplify the system around what we can actually do. And I'm glad to have innovation in New Brunswick lead the way for other parts of the country and learn from that. I'd like to try to do that in BC. We had a, we tried to, to increase the number of participants in British Columbia, and we always had to do it looking over our shoulder what the feds were going to do in terms of removing funding that we needed to provide the care for patients. And I think we have to just take a deep breath and say, is healthcare important? My answer is yes. What's important for healthcare? First of all, patients are at the priority list. Second of all, that we have physicians we need. Third, that we have the nurses we need. Fourth, that we have the technology we need. And then look at how do we deliver those. And right now, we can't afford to deliver on the epidemic of you know, type 2 diabetes, the mental health epidemic, the opioid epidemic, you know, all of the, the things that are confronting us. We have to say, how do we deliver that service? And to do that, we have to bring in all the parts. We have to bring in the private sector. We have to recognize in the public sector, we want people to get care they need, when they need it. We have to recognize that different provinces will have different responses. We have to encourage innovation so we do better and better and better. My experience is not that people in the federal government are bad or anything like that. They're just not on the ground. They're just not delivering. I'm here with former British Columbia Premier Gordon Campbell, and he just did a great presentation on transforming healthcare in Canada. Um, Mr. Campbell, I wanted to ask you one question, which is what do you think the biggest misconception about healthcare in Canada is? Uh, I think the biggest misconception is we have the best healthcare system in the world. We do not. We're not close to that uh, any longer. Commonwealth Foundation just came out, I think, put us 10th out of 11. But here's what really is important to Canadians. Uh, they think it's there for them when they need it. And for thousands and thousands and thousands of Canadians, that's not the case. In fact, we have governments restricting their ability to get the care they need. Only in Quebec does a Canadian have the right to go and get the care they need when the government doesn't meet their needs. Uh, I think it's a, a crucial right for Canadians. I think it's an important first step in reforming our health care system so we have more doctors, more beds, and more care. Most importantly, when you and your family need health care, it's there for you. Not next year, today. So do you think that, I, I know I said one question, what do you think would be the number one thing maybe we could do to transform health care, give patients more choice in how they access health care? I think we have to allow them choice. We have to give them choice. And right now we prohibit that those choices. In British Columbia, they're trying to stop patients from accessing care when they're on the wait list, not just a day longer, but months and years longer than they should be. You know, it's easy to talk about wait lists and think it's nothing. Every number on a wait list is a person, a person with a family, a person whose quality of life is deteriorated, a person who's not getting the diagnostics they need. So I think we have to access uh, private care. I think we have to have a public-private partnership that works for patients, not for institutions, not for ideologues, not for politicians, for patients. I think when politicians take advantage of the private, uh, uh, private clinics and they say to the public, but not you, you know, when prisoners get to use private clinics, but they say to the public, not you, when the judges can use private clinics, but they say to the public, not you, I say it's for all Canadians. All Canadians have rights to access to care and Canada and British Columbia, all the provinces should make sure that access to private care is there when a public system isn't meeting your patient needs. Really well said, thank you so much. So we're on a networking break now at the Canada Strong and Free Conference, and I'm gonna show you guys some of the different booths, exhibits that are open, some of the different organizations, not-for-profits, charities, that have displays here and are here to talk about the really important public policy and charitable work that they do.
I'm here now with Sabine El Chidiak. She is with the Institute for Liberal Studies. Sabine, I wanted to ask what do, what does the Institute for Liberal Studies do? Are you like the Liberal Party? What do you want people to know? And what's your favorite part of coming to this conference? So we're the we're an educational nonprofit. We're based in Ottawa, but we actually work all across Canada, bringing classical liberal education to university students and the general public. Uh, and we love. I mean, I, I love being here because there's so many nice and diverse people to meet and talk to about these ideas. Uh, so that's what I like about this conference. So a non a nonpartisan organization. That's right. Yes, it's nonpartisan. We're not Justin Trudeau liberals. We are Adam Smith liberals. <laughs> so uh, that's the kind of liberalism that we're talking about, classical liberalism. And that's the kind of liberalism I like. Well, <laughs> thanks. Thanks for coming on, Sabine. So I'm here with Peter Sean Taylor, who's with C2C Journal. So, Peter, I wanted to know if you can tell the viewers what C2C Journal is and what your favorite part of coming to the Canada Strong and Free Conference is. Well, sure. Well, we're an online magazine, uh, c2cjournal.ca. Uh, for the conference, we went to the trouble of uh, putting together a print version, so we have something to, to give away. But we're an um, online magazine uh, exclusively, um, and we specialize in essay-length uh, articles on public policy issues. Um, you've written for us on... Yeah, I, I've written on vaccine passports in British Columbia, and I have a forthcoming article in the next issue about the Emergencies Act, so stay tuned. Sure. So we like uh, longer pieces than you're going to get in the, uh, the regular media, uh, sort of an authoritative take on, on uh, issues. We take things from a market-based, sort of freedom-based uh, perspective. But we like to have a lot of research in it, so it's a, you know, a comprehensive view on the topic. And uh, uh, that's the, s the space we occupy, I guess, in the, the media. Yeah, I love writing for C2C because I can take the time to really dig into a nuanced topic. And reading other experts writing about their fields in a really detailed way. It's a great, great uh, journal. So my last question is, what is your favorite part of coming to the networking conference? Well, that's easy because we're an online magazine. We don't get to meet anybody uh, in person uh, during the workday. So it's uh, meeting meeting you and meeting all sorts of meeting uh, people walking by, uh, you know, in, in the flesh uh, is much more interesting. So uh, having a booth here, everybody walks by on their way to lunch. So I get to meet uh, people that uh, are readers and potential readers. All right. Thanks so much, Peter. Okay, I'm here with my friend Andrew Lawton from True North. I've been on your show a whole bunch of times, so now you are on mine. Uh, so I wanted to ask you, what exactly is True North? What do you want people to know about it? How do people sign up to subscribe? And what is your favorite thing about this conference? So True North is a, an online news and commentary platform. We do investigative journalism, podcasts, full-length shows, and we've really tried to disrupt the mainstream media narrative about a lot of political issues and speak to a, a segment of the population, uh, not just, you know, partisan conservatives, but people who are libertarians, people on the right, or, or people who just like having a diverse array of viewpoints that they expose themselves to. And we've really tried to give a news, not that's pandering to them, but news that's of interest to them. And I think that's especially true in a conservative leadership race, where the things that CBC and the Toronto Star care about are not the things that right of center Canadians care about. So how do people sign up to subscribe? So we've got our website at tnc.news, and we're also like just carpet bombing every social media platform. You can get us on Facebook, on Twitter, on Rumble, and I've got my own personal uh, platform as well on Twitter mostly, which is at Andrew Lawton. And what's your favorite part of coming to the Manning Conference, the Canada Strong and, and Free Conference, although I'm always going to know it as, <laughs> as the Manning Conference. I don't know if that will ever, it's always going to be the Sky Dome. It's always going to be the Manning Conference. What's your favorite part of this conference? I feel like this one, and I said this to Troy Lanigan, who put it together largely, that this one's a bit easy, because I think after two years of like these being illegal, people would show up to like a, a frozen beat convention and still love it. But I, I think in general, seeing people that are part of this broader movement of freedom-minded individuals who, like you, I mean, many of them I've had on my shows. Now, in your case, I've, I've met you in person before, but there are people that I've had on my show a number of times and never actually met in person. So there's a family reunion aspect of it, which I, I absolutely love. And that's not to shortchange the program. The program's been great as well. Uh, but it's just seeing all these people and, and also learning about what different groups are, are doing in this space. 
I totally agree. It's It's been a long two years and I'm happy. I think this might be my first in-person conference in Canada since the pandemic. So it's great to be here. It was great to talk to you, to see you. And thanks so much for coming on the show. Yeah, thanks for always coming online. The audience loves you. So we'll have you back soon. Awesome, thanks. So the panel on the future of work just wrapped up. I'm going to see if I can chat briefly with my friend Catherine Marshall, who was on that panel. Uh, it was a really popular, <laughs> obviously, a crowded room here, a very popular topic. So we'll see if we can chat with her briefly. So I'm here with my friend Catherine Marshall, who is a lawyer, and she's also on the board of the Canadian Constitution Foundation. And she just wrapped up a panel on the future of work. So Catherine, I wanted to ask you, what's the number one takeaway point you want to make about the future of work and maybe the future of work from a conservative perspective or a right of center perspective? That is definitely becoming more individualized, that traditional work is dying out and the future is all going to be about gig, um, freelance, technology, remote work. And as conservatives, we have to support that from a public policy perspective. And then I also wanted to ask you, what is your favorite part of coming to the Canada Strong and Free Networking Conference? Oh, it's just like a family reunion, <laughs> seeing all my friends and it's fun, just seeing everybody. I agree. I love that part of it. All right. Thank you so much, Catherine. Thank you. Okay, we're coming to the end of the main full day at the Canada Strong and Free Networking Conference. The last panel discussion just wrapped up and I'm now heading to a hospitality suite hosted by my friends at the Canadian Taxpayers Federation. The theme is beer and popcorn. It's a famous quote from uh, a, li a liberal strategist during an election a few years ago. Uh, if you don't know the quote, <laughs> you can look it up. But you know, I like beer. I like popcorn and I like my friends at the Taxpayers Federation, so I am for sure gonna like this hospitality suite. Celebrities. <laughs> They're already yelling at me to come and have the popcorn with them. <laughs> hey, everyone. Uh